and welcome to the second episode today of The Rope of Hope. In this episode, I have Carly Welder on with me. Carly, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. Of course. So before we jump in, you guys, if you want to support this broadcast, if you have been touched by any episode, all episodes, if you enjoy any of the other podcasts that I do, please consider becoming a supporter. Go over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash this fat girl life. You guys, that's where you're going to find out everything and anything that is Kimberly Pleasure. All my podcast stuff goes over there. The tea goes over there and there is tea coming. Y'all, it's kind of big. So if you want to find out, even if you don't financially sponsor me or support me, if you just want to be a follower and you want to be nosy and get the tea, go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash this fat girl life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so again, I do have Carly Welder on with me and we're going to be talking in this episode about an issue that is really kind of common to most of us. And that's being in that place where you just feel stuck. You don't know how to get out of it. You don't know what steps you're supposed to be taking next. You're just stuck. And going from that to feeling that you're living a life of purpose. So Carly, before we jump into this, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. Where do I start? <laughs> I love when people ask me this. I'm like, oh, I can talk all day at all, you guys. <laughs> um, like, I can tell you where I live. I live in yeah. Perfect. Canada. I live in a town called Kelowna, so it's four hours inland from Vancouver. Most people know where Vancouver is. That's why I always say that. I live in Okanagan Valley. It's beautiful here. I'm very blessed. I'm surrounded by beaches and lakes and beautiful mountains to hike and camp. And I love the outdoors, so it's a great place to live. And I'm actually born and raised here, too. Okay. Pets, kids, husband, wife. It's just me for now, but I do have a cat named Ashes, which I co-share with my sister, I guess. <laughs> she's a little savage. She's a, she's a black and white cat. She's cuddly, but she's mean at the same time. Totally get it. I think all cats are like that. Oh, my. I have a cat named Fifi yeah. O'Hare. And Fifi can be the sweetest little thing ever created. Or she could be the demon cat. So I get it. Yeah, she, she has her moments. She's really nice with us, but like outside people, she's like not so happy around. Yeah. The older she gets, the weirder she's getting, we notice too. Yeah, with thieves, it just depends on her mood. My arm mm. is proof. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, true. so on to tonight's topic. Now this this feeling of being stuck. I think every person has felt that. Mm -hmm. How did that look for you? Mm -hmm. um, for me, the feelings of feeling stuck were, when I feel, well, I was feeling stuck, it was more so like I didn't have any direction and I kind of was just like caught in the same cycle that I always say, like a hamster wheel. And I didn't really know where to go or what to do that was going to bring me purpose and happiness in my life. And it was a lot of, you know, pressure from society's expectations and norms that I felt growing up a lot that, you know, I always thought in order to be happy and successful, that you had to go the traditional route, which for me, um, especially I'd say more Western culture is, you know, put yourself into thousands of dollars of debt with a degree or a master's diploma, whatever, do that stuff. Um, you know, have the husband put your mortgage again with the debt, and then you're probably living paycheck to paycheck. You're only living for your two week vacations a year. You know, then you're mm -hmm. supposed to have a baby and like have this fun family. And like that for me was really a lot of pressure I felt, which 
which in turn led me to feel stuck in what I was doing for a long time, not knowing what I was doing and felt lost because I knew that I deep down, I didn't know at the time, but that was like my intuition, my higher self was telling me that, no, Carly, you're definitely meant for more than that. Like not right now, maybe in, maybe in the future or something. But so that led me to feeling stuck all the time because I saw everyone around me doing that and I wasn't doing that. Does that make sense? That makes 100% perfect sense. My mom used to always call it going around the mountain. You're going around the same mountain. It's almost like a carousel that you yeah. cannot get off of. And then not only are you watching everybody else and it seems like everybody else is doing it. Why can't I? Yeah. Then you start dealing with issues of self-worth mm -hmm. or lack thereof and self-esteem or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And it really starts to become a vicious cycle. Yeah. So how do you hit that point? of applying the break, saying that enough is enough and getting off that ride. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be ready for, ready for the change and just also to trust your journey as well. You know, we're in a society that's always looking for instant results and instant this and instant that and not practicing any patience whatsoever. We get mad about the microwave. Like, seriously? <laughs> I seriously what, think like, about the comments that I call it a microwave. I call it a microwave society. I seriously would Yeah, that's care. exactly. We are a microwave society, 100%. Oh, yes. Very much so. And so when, when we live in this microwave society of instant gratification, Mm-hmm. How do we start training ourselves to really kind of take a step back and kind of enjoy that journey rather than resent it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. For me, that was really like coming home to all that is and really stepping into trusting that I am a limitless being and I can create co-create, I should say, infinite possibilities and experiences within my life. Um, and I wasn't aware of that. And it wasn't until, you know, I started on a personal growth journey that led me to where I am today. And with that comes, you know, the patience, trusting divine time, living in the now, being present, being grateful for what you already have. I know so many people that like complain about their lives. I'm like, well, are you on the street injecting heroin in your arm right now? No, I know you're not, or we wouldn't be even having a conversation to begin with. So it's like, uh, we're, and again, I think we're in a society too that takes everything for granted as well, hugely, in Western society, and I would say more so, but no one's grateful for what they already have or even what their journey is on. But also, when I came home that I, I now know that my soul came down in my physical body to have this experience and that there has always been a grand master plan and maybe I'm not aware, fully aware of all of it. I'm aware of some of it, <laughs> but it's just the trusting and the knowing and allowing it to guide you and knowing that everything's happening exactly how it's supposed to was one of the biggest shifts for me too. And I think that becomes so hard for us. And I, I see it on social mm -hmm. media videos all the time, especially on TikTok. I, I'm obsessed with TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I, I own it. <laughs> <laughs> so you see different videos constantly. Trust the process. Yeah. Trust the process. Mm -hmm. And that's a message that is being ingrained in me through these different videos when I'm half asleep of trust the process. Yes. And I think that becomes so hard for us. You know, because especially in this, you know, time of instant gratification, everything is just readily available to us through our phones, our laptops, whatever. You know, Amazon Prime delivers two days of, you know, out. You don't have to wait like you used to have to for snail mail. You send a text message. So everything is just so readily available to us that trusting that process mm -hmm. is a foreign concept. I wanted to mention too, I, my friend brought this up the other day and I thought it was really cool. And she's like, 
before technology, we didn't know what was going on in other parts of the world. We didn't know what Sally was doing, what Karen was doing, what this or that. We were always trusting the process because there was nothing to compare and like judge ourselves on or like mm -hmm. we didn't we were we were living in the now always right so so if we were all we were already living in the now well then we're already just trusting the process because we don't have anything else to look at to really like assess right we don't know any better pretty much they always say what's that <laughs> ignorance is bliss almost yeah right? that saying but it's like true to an extent isn't it oh definitely and I, I look at different aspects of life and kind of compare it to like the life that my daughter has. Mm -hmm. You know, she's sure. grown up with technology. She's 23. Oh, yeah. All she's ever known is technology. Yeah. All she's ever known is social media. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, I didn't have to worry about what so and so said about the outfit I was wearing. Because if I didn't hear it and my friends didn't hear it and tell me, yeah, I had no clue. Yeah. Yes, there were difficulties at that time. We all dealt with them. We all wished things would change. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have this instant gratification to compare it to. Yeah. And now, you know, I'll even look at my daughter, you know, she'll ask me a question. I'm like, you know, look it up. You know, take the time to look on a map for where something is instead of just trusting a random voice over your phone it, because it, they don't know how to do any of that it's mm -hmm. never they've never had to depend on that mm -hmm. it, if technology went away right it would be a world of hurt <laughs> but i think even i would struggle a little bit because i've gotten used to it i've gotten used to, if i had to use a street map I could unfold it and I could give myself directions, but I don't want to. Right? It's easier just to type in the address and let the GPS guide you. Yes, Lola is my friend. Right? <laughs> I love Lola. Yeah. Yes, I have name right GPS. That's cute. I like that. So back to where we were, though, because we kind of rabbit trailed. <laughs> But I think you know, it was a good little rabbit trail because, again, it was about, you know, really trusting that process of getting us to where we're supposed to be. Yeah. So in trusting that process, without knowing the grand master plan, how do you even know when you've arrived? Mm hmm that's another whole ball game is living in uncertainty in the unknown, which people don't like. That's, that's been a huge thing that I've had to transmute as well as loving living in the uncertainty in the unknown. And I think that is really hard. It's, you know, embracing that unknown factor. Yeah. Because there's a lot of fear mm -hmm. that comes with that. There's a lot of distrust mm -hmm. that comes with that. Distrust in what it looks like. Distrust that you made the right decisions. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of second guessing. I always say there's never no wrong or wrong, wrong or right decision in life ever. Nothing's ever right or wrong. If you, if we all just focused on what makes us happy, what lights up our soul, what excites us every day, that's all we need to do. Like literally, it's just, I love that. it's so over, people overcomplicate things. <laughs> like literally. I, I admit I'm guilty of that. <laughs> we all do. I, <laughs> I'd say more like females. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, but sure there's males too that probably would say the same. So, so I mean, you've gone through this process. So for you personally, how does that life of purpose look? For me, it's really surrendering and letting go of any attachments. So just following my soul's mission, my soul's purpose. And like I say, I just wake up every day and I'm like, what excites Carly today? <laughs> what does Carly want to do today? 
when I do it. So, I mean, for me too, I mean, I run a completely different business than most people do as well. Um, most people use their local mind when they run businesses, which is the hard and long way. <laughs> I harness my power and source and mother earth and <laughs> make things a lot easier and simple for simpler for me as well. But there's, there's everyone's journey is different. And I think it's just really letting go and just being, that is the biggest, the biggest thing that always with all my clients is just like, just be, <laughs> and it's easier said than done for sure. But there's a lot of different tools that you can use that will help you. And that's really, truly what I teach a lot of my clients is giving them the proper tools to be, just be in that energy and don't live in the past. Don't live in the future. Just live in the now. Yeah. Have goals, have a vision, of course, because we do create our own realities, but almost letting that go as well too, because sometimes our goals and our vision is our ego and we're just feeding mm -hmm. our ego constantly and not our higher self. So it's always like reassessing that and asking, okay, well, is that goal or vision really serving my highest and best self? Or is that just serving my ego? So now you have a book out. Coming soon. Coming I'm soon. Apologies. I apologize. Coming soon. <laughs> Are these topics discussed in that book? Yes. I'm actually a co-author. Okay. So there is 22 other beautiful ladies that we all wrote a chapter. And we're all kind of in this same realm sort of thing. So there's a variety of us. We, I can't even think of all the different kind of people we have. It's really beautiful. But it was exciting and I've always wanted to write my own book and it was kind of the universe dropping it on my lap and like, Oh, here you go. <laughs> so I took the opportunity and it perfectly aligned with, you know, who I am, my business and my purpose. So I think the chapter was quite um, interesting. Actually, it really gets into you really digging into your self because it was, I was writing about my journey and my story. So yeah realizing all the lessons and like the synchronicities too as well which is interesting mm -hmm. and realizing those two is also beautiful as well because then you realize oh like this is why that happened or this is why i did this or this or that and yeah it sucked or yeah it maybe didn't seem right at the time but now if you look back and you're like oh wow that all makes sense there's a reason why that happened to me it almost makes you feel better. You know what I mean? <laughs> you figure out that lesson in that moment. Yeah. Exactly. So what is the book called? It's called Aligned Leaders. And when is it being released? The digital copies are October 8th for 99 cents USD. Yay. And then hard copies will be like end of the month sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I have actually typed that into the notes and it will now be on the bottom of the screen for everybody to see. So definitely go to where you can get digital books. I love Amazon. I am an Amazon Kindle girl. Love it. And so all my books are digital. So oh, definitely go down there and check it out. Let's support this book, support what Carly's doing. Now, Carly, if somebody wanted to work with you personally, how could they go about doing that? Hmm. I'm mostly on Facebook, so I'm sure that everyone can see my name there so they can find me. <laughs> okay. But I do have a website. It's coachcarly.com, but coach with a K. And Carly, obviously, how my name is spelled as well. And my, I always say my DMs are always open. I'm always, I just want to help. So I'm of service to you any way that I can possibly be, of course. Perfect. I truly believe that if we were all serving in our soul's purpose, that, you know, we definitely have an improved world from what we have going on right now. So I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of my, my mission, you know, my vision is to create an improved world by helping people first heal, right? We all got to heal first, <laughs> heal, and then really step into their power and harness it and follow their soul's calling. Yeah. 
Well, Carly, thank you so much for being here with me tonight. I have so enjoyed being able to connect with you and have you on the show. I do have one final question for you. Okay. And it has nothing to do with what we've talked about. <laughs> but I ask it of every guest. <laughs> what is the most inspiring thing that has ever been said to you? Most inspiring thing? Yes. Hmm, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I got a message actually last week that was really inspiring. Someone messaged it to me and they said um, something along the lines like, I see the work you're doing and it's so beautiful and blah, blah, blah. And like, even just you not even, even just you showing up for yourself and doing the work for yourself, because most people know that I do the work daily on myself is healing humanity and in turn, of course, healing Mother Earth. And I thought that was really beautiful. That is beautiful. Instead of like, you know, giving my energy like I do and like that aspect, it was more so when I'm focusing on myself, which I do all the time, it's in turn doing that. So I thought that was really inspirational. <laughs> it's nice. That is so nice. I love that. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, again, thank you for coming on the show tonight. It has been such a joy getting to talk to you and getting to know you on this level. Please. Definitely, you guys, check out the book. October 8th is when it will launch digitally. Hard copy, end of October. Yay. Make sure that you check it out, pick it up. If you are wanting to get in touch with Carly to work with her, check out her website, check out her Facebook. Carly, I will definitely be keeping in touch with you after this as well. Yeah, I love that. Thanks, Kimberly. Of course, of course. Well, I hope all of you have a great night, and I will see you all next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>